mío. Sirén mío. The best supermodel. Okay. That's my favorite song right now. Okay, everything is working now. So first, Every, uh, everything's working. We're rocking. Yeah. So first, I would like to congratulate you being the double XL freshman. Thank you, man. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you, you wrote on Twitter, uh, been waiting on this day since I was 16. Uh, did you wait literally, or was it just a follow up? No, that's no. That I wasn't just for like shits and giggles. That was. For real, I had really been, um, you know, it's funny. I remember the first time I read the XXL Freshman magazine and it had, I remember the cover, just the only person on the cover I knew at the time was Nipsey Hussle. That's the only person I knew. But Nipsey Hussle was on the cover. Wiz Khalifa was on the cover. Big Sean was on the cover. Um, wasn't J. Cole on that cover or no? J. Cole was on that cover. I found out, yeah, I already, well, I didn't know, I knew about OJ the Juice Man too. But I found out about so many artists. Uh, I found out about so many artists who like ended up changing my life, really, because of that magazine. And ever since that first issue, I was like, "Damn, one day I gotta be on that." Mm. And it finally happened. So, it's sick. Uh, Word. And to, in this double XL pitch, uh, you you said I want to be in double XL because I really want to do that cipher. Uh, so what shall we expect about yeah. your performance in Cyphers? I mean, <laughs> uh, man, yo, expect bars, expect bars. Mm. That's that's what you can expect. I mean, yeah, so I wanted to do the Cypher because I really wanted to do that damn Cypher. Mm. And uh, who's your favorite uh, from this year's class? Uh, my favorite from this year's class? <laughs> Besides my, I mean, obviously you got to be your own favorite, but uh, I don't know. I like, I like, I pretty much like everybody in there. Um, you know, I got to shout out Kamaya, obviously. You know, California representative. Um, now, nah, but I really listen. That's the cool thing about this cover is I listen to all of their music, literally every single person. I think Playboy Cardi is like the coolest person in the world, and I aspire to be that cool. And, and who was the biggest surprise for you when you saw the, the full list? For me, it was Kamaya. Like, uh, I, I listened to her album last year. I really, really loved it. But I thought that uh, Young Yume could be there. And I hope that Kamaya can be. But it was a surprise for me. True. Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't think that... Also, I don't think that the, the, the list should be subjected to just one girl. I don't think it's like, oh... Kamaya was, I don't know why Kamaya was on there because Young and May should have been on there. It's like, yeah, Young and May definitely should have been on there, but that's not to say, you know, that's not to say that Kamaya shouldn't have been on there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you got to think about it. Like, and obviously, you're not from California. I can, you know what I mean, clearly tell. So it's like, you don't know, like, the type of impact Kamaya is having on mm -hmm. people out there. You know, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? She's actually really impacting people out there. And uh, if you don't think I've been broke all my life, now I wonder yeah. how does it feel to be rich? If you don't think that's a blap, if you don't think that 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 be, that that earns her a spot on there, I know that too. I mean, that's yeah. a given. Yeah, uh, that's a given. Uh, but um, but yeah, that's not nah, she. Uh -huh. I think Kamaya definitely earned her spot on there. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's one thing about the freshman list. Everybody is always going to talk about the first. Everybody wants to look at the freshman list just to talk about who they think should be on there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't even buy, I guarantee you the majority of people don't even buy that magazine year round. They strictly tune in just to be like, ah, oh, man, you know, so-and-so mm -hmm. should have been on there. So, you know, shouts out Kamaya. Yeah, and, and that's good that uh, what you said, because the brand of the freshman itself is uh, getting bigger and bigger each year, I think. And when you when you look at the views of the ciphers from last year, it la looks like the the Freshman is is the thing each year. Oh, it definitely is. I think the freshman thing is the biggest biggest. Ma it's like the damn near like the biggest hip hop magazine of the year. Period. Not even damn near. Like kind of is. It's like the biggest hip hop magazine of the year. So mm -hmm. yeah, man, it's, it's really cool. It's really cool to be a part of. And I think it's just like, and I th I think people are super entitled to their opinions too. I think that's half the that's like half the reason it's so big. You know what I mean? It's because everybody wants to 
everybody wants to give their opinion on it. It's the one magazine everybody cares to talk about. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, I feel like sometimes people, <laughs> even if they don't even like, even if they're not even, they don't even listen to rap, they'll still like be like, chime in, you know what I mean, and say who they like or who they don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and getting from the freshman yeah. topic more to your music. Uh, when I watched your interview in Hot 97, Ebro said that he didn't like I Spy, but was real surprised with the yeah. album. And did you get a lot of opinions like that? Um, no, not really. Uh, you know, I I don't think I've done enough like press yet to run into enough people like Ebro. But um, yeah, no, nah, for the most part, you know. And I think that, and that's like a new transition for me too, is getting to a point where it's like I'm big enough for, you know, not every opinion to be good. So far, Ebro's one, the only person that said that to my face, you know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody else is pretty much just, you know, either A, been a fan of the song or like, you know, um, B, just been a fan of me. But um, yeah, no, nah, but Ebro's cool too. Mm-hmm. Shouts out old man Ebro. And uh, you, <laughs> you, old as hell. you also said, yeah, I like I like to make happy music because I know there's hella depressed people who need it. And did you have some yeah. inspirations for getting a mindset like this? Man, definitely. Um, well, like, definitely Kid Cudi was like a huge influence for me with that because I was that, you know what I mean? I was that kid. I was that depressed kid that needed to hear some type of positive reinforcement in my life, you know what I mean? <laughs> I needed to know that somebody was trying to help. And um, Kid Cudi was definitely one of like the, the biggest influences in that in that respect, you know what I mean? Um, he kind of switched my mindset to not just make music to make a hot song, but try to make a hot song and help somebody at the same time. Mm-hmm. And if you can do that, then you're like a real superhero, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Pound it. Yeah, and you gotta pound the screen. You gotta pound it. Yeah, you have to pound it. Bow. Uh, there we go. And when it comes to the superhero topic, uh, if it could be one superhero for a day, who would it be? If I did, if I had to be a superhero one day, yeah, for one, a day? one superhero from uh, comics or. Damn, you know what? A part of me really wants to be Spider-Man, strictly for you know. For personality, personality points. But then another part of me is like, how can I not pick a superhero that can fly? Like, how do I not pick Superman? You know what I'm saying? He can fly. Like, mm-hmm. flying? Knowing what it feels like to fly? With that alone, I feel like I probably got to go. I probably got to go Superman just, be, just you know, because he can fly. And I got to know what that feels like. So, so maybe you should be Super Spider-Man, something like this. I mean, yeah, if I could make a hybrid. See, I didn't know. <laughs> See, I didn't know what the restrictions were or not. I didn't know I could make a hybrid. If I could make a hybrid, hell yeah. Super Spider-Man, for sure. Well, just Spider-Man who can fly. Mm-hmm. Let's just even say that. I don't even need all the other stuff. I don't need, you know, X-ray vision. I don't need all that. Just let me fly. I'll be fine with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, when it comes to the to making happy music, Uh, you also uh, worked with GZ or Chance the Rapper who have similar mind state. Uh, when I also did an interview with GZ, he was like such a normal guy, such a humble guy. And yeah. was that uh, that positive energy brings you together? Uh, me and him? Yeah. Well, nah, me and GZ, we met through um, we met through a friend, DJ Carnage, who was like kind of the first dude to work with me and i think uh like me and g well first and foremost we we just became friends when like we when we first were introduced with each other like he was always super cool and i was just such a fan of like how how focused him and his team were from an early standpoint because i like opened up for gz in 2012 right so this is a long time ago and like i remember when i first just first moved to la and really wanted to get my like feet under me and really figure out how do I make it in like the music industry. And I got to witness kind of his entire rise. And that always just like kind of attracted me to around, like around to the G easy, you know, camp, like, because they were just so focused and they kind of just always looked at us as like, 
you know what I'm saying, like young dudes that were super passionate about it and just kind of took us under their wing in the beginning. And so he's more just like, you know, like the big homie. You know what I'm saying? The big, taller, more cracking, more cracking homie. You know what I mean? And uh, your musical inspirations vary from rock to electronic music. You listen to a lot of different artists. Uh, but uh, you, if you had to choose three biggest inspirations, who would it be? Three biggest inspirations. Herm. Let me think. Uh, I would say Janikis. I would say... Um, I would say... Jadakiss, I would say, um, damn, no, I'm gonna say Jadakiss, I'm gonna say Weezer, and I'm gonna say, uh, there's gotta be, like, one more, just, like, R&B singer, really. I'll probably say Jadakiss, Weezer, and then, like, Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not nice. The nice and uh, ver- that's a, yeah, that's a nice pretty, list yeah, like, like the whole whole uh, different genres in one. Yeah, that, and that's uh, all over the place. That's like a really really random box of chocolates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, one of your most surprising collabs was probably with Legendary and Phases. And Don't Wanna Fall in Love is for me probably top three of your tracks. And uh, yo, wait, wait, you just refer to and Phases as Legendary? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he, he did it. He did. M-Phases is legendary. Mm-hmm. People need to understand, okay? This yeah. is a legendary man we're talking about. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, shall we expect some further tracks uh, with him? Oh, oh yeah, what? M-Phases, look, he made my... I did an album, my last album I put out was called Smile, and M-Phases produced the entire album, the entire Smile album, mm-hmm. uh, along with Sunny Norway. Shouts out to Sunny Norway. Bomb noise. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, my new album that I'm working on, that I have been working on for a long, I'm going to be, it's going to be M Phases all over that thing too. M Phases and Nao. So. Yeah. so that, that's oh, right, we yeah. got some, we got some shut. Yeah, we, we listened to, to his music with Superstition, for example, in Poland like 10 years ago. So, yeah. You were um, listening to M Phases 10 years ago? Yeah. When he did the album wow. with Superstition and guys like this, yeah. A lot of uh, independent music. Bro, he's the bomb, bro. He's really, really, mm. really, 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 really good. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you said uh, that uh, I Spy first was uh, like a throwaway. And what was the first moment uh-huh. that you you saw that it will blow up this big and will be, be such a hit? Man, you know what? It was definitely a throwaway. I had zero idea it was going to blow up and get big. But, um... So yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't know it was gonna really be a hit, and then I put it on SoundCloud, and literally that's all I did. I put it on SoundCloud. I tweeted it once. I forgot to put the link in the tweet, so I didn't even tweet the link, and it just kind of, you know, it kind of just grew legs of its own and just and just mm-hmm. took off. Really, I, I I put it on. The, it was definitely the SoundCloud and like the the youth. The young, you know what I'm saying, like the kids that made that thing crack. Mm-hmm. And it was after, you know what, I didn't know it was going to be a complete hit until Lil Yachty DM'd me and was like, dog, this is going to be a hit, bro. I'm telling you, it's going to be crazier than anything you've ever seen in your life. And I was like, damn, you're right, bro. Yeah, and, uh, and do you also plan to do some more music with Yachty after this single? Yeah, I mean, you know, next time I have a song that he wants to get on, I definitely have, I definitely have music with him, music with him. And uh, a few days ago, we also got a remix of I Spy with Kodak Black. And is it like yeah. the, the only one official remix or do you work on some more? Because, for example, I would love to hear Devin the Dude on it or Wiz Khalifa. I think they will fit perfectly. Uh, <laughs> that would be sick. Devin the Dude or Wiz Khalifa would be sick as hell. But nah, I think um, Kodak, you know what the thing was? Kodak, you know, he was recently in jail. He was recently, like, incarcerated. And apparently, while in jail, I Spy was his favorite song. And he says that the beginning part, like, kept him motivated. You know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. it like, it helped him. 
basically get through it. You know, he was hell of uh, helped him stay positive. And so they were they've been telling me for months when we first dropped I Spy that he wanted to do a version of it. And when he finally got out, I was like, Hell yeah, go ahead. You know what I mean? And um yeah, and so he did the version and I loved it. He killed it. So uh yeah, I just heard that was his favorite song when he was like in jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so then that's great. And uh, you're from California, but not from LA. You rap Ventura, a small city without many major music acts. And was it harder for you to build first music hype due due to it, or in the internet era, it doesn't matter like 10 or 20 years ago? It doesn't matter. Yeah, zero. It does not matter. And the thing is, I'm actually from. I'm from. I'm from. Uh, I was born in Northridge, which is like the suburbs of LA. So I know. I, I like. I have connections to LA, but none of that is what made it work. Mm -hmm. The only thing that made it work was YouTube. It's all due to YouTube and the internet. Like, you can be from Rochester, New York, which is where I'm standing right now, and you can still pop off. As long as you shoot interesting mm -hmm. videos. I shot nine of my 11 music videos back then, all in the same neighborhood. Just found different interesting things. You know? Mm -hmm. So, so the most important part is to build like a internet connection with with people with fans, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you think? Which three classic West Coast albums would you call the most underrated? Like cities that people really need to know to understand to understand uh, Cali hip hop culture, but which aren't known as well as Chronic or Doggy Style. So you you want the ones that are underrated or the ones that everybody already knows about? Uh, underrated classics that people need to know. Bullets well, ain't got no name, Volume Two. Doc, that's Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle, Bullets mm -hmm. ain't got no name, Volume Two. Um, uh, and this is all new school. I'm just hitting you with all new school shit. Bullets ain't got no name, Volume Two. Uh, YG just read up Volume the first one, his first mixtape. Mm -hmm. That he did when he when he came back, um, and uh, Dom Kennedy the Yellow album. Dom Kennedy the Yellow album, one of the best West Coast projects ever released. One of the best projects ever released by a West Coast artist. Mm -hmm. You familiar? Yep. Yeah, it's we, amazing, we, bro. we also peace and we, happiness. Uh -huh. Listen to the poem in peace and happiness. If mm -hmm. ever we should get lost here. Don't yeah, we also me. we also got I Dom did. Kennedy in Poland few years ago, and the show was great. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you had to name like uh, three of your favorite uh, '90s uh, West Coast albums, definitely Doggy Style. Um, definitely, well, I mean the Chronic too. But I'm gonna keep it solid. I like 2001 more than I like the Chronic. I love the Chronic, but I like 2001 more. Um, I'm trying to think of what's, I'm trying to think of something that you don't hear all the time though. Uh, let's say some more super fire. No, I already said Bulls ain't got no name. It's amazing. Oh, wait, yo, hold on. I take, you know, I take my other, my first thing back. I'm gonna say the three of classic underrated mixtapes are Bulls ain't got no name, volume two, Nipsey Hustle, and then the marathon, Nipsey Hustle, mm -hmm. and then the yellow album, Dom Kennedy. Mm -hmm. But, um, so you said, oh, yeah, okay, so doggy style. Dr. Dre, uh, Chronic 2001, and I don't know, fam. It's like all these are already just too obvious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so last questions. Uh, what are your main goals for 2017? Do you have some like the checklist, like the bucket list for this year? Um. Yeah. I want to, I def, I just want to, my checklist for this year, I want to release an album. Um, I I want to release, I want to officially release an album. I want to, um, I want to buy my mom something extravagant. And, yeah, that's all. Okay, so thanks for the interview. <laughs> and uh, what would you like to add uh, for your fans in Poland uh, for, for this Skype? conversation hey listen all to all my homies in poland okay i know it's cold over there sometimes but it's okay remain happy remain positive you guys are awesome and one day i'm gonna come over to poland and i'm gonna line everybody up and give you guys big ass 
ass hugs one after another, okay? Okay. So, I mean that. So, pinky promise. Yeah. Promise with your pinky. Okay, yeah. there we go. Thank you. Yeah, so we were waiting for the show in Poland and surfing for the crowd like the like the California way. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come surfing, man. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna actually just fucking like fly over on like a hoverboard. Okay. So thanks. Hi my man. Peace. Thank you.